All right, welcome back to Fuck It Socks, the podcast, episode 74. Today on the show, the teachers get beat up by the students again in this week's Urban Decay. Then a racist subway rider harasses a family. We'll tell you what to do in the same situation. Then a woman gets called out in cringe of the week for not seasoning her food correctly. We'll tell you who's actually in the right and who's actually in the wrong. Then we cover the Trump DeSantis drama. And last but not least, the LGBTs continue to prove they don't have enough real world problems in this week's cringe of the week. All this and more is Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 74, ranked the best new podcast of all time. All time. All time. All time. All time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Fluckus Talks, the podcast, featuring Richard Bradbury. All right, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Public Square. Guys, Public Square has become the number one app for finding America first patriotic companies in your area. The app is free to download. They sponsor the show and it's a fantastic product. I will never waste your time with non-fantastic products. You can go check out the app, which is free to download. You can find restaurants in your area that only buy local. You can find coffee shops that don't enforce uh, COVID vaccine mandates or make you wear a mask or fire people for not getting the vaccine, stuff like that. It's a database for America First patriotic companies in your area. It's growing fast. The community is growing. You can download the app today and add your own business. You can get involved in the community tabs and meet like-minded people in your area. And most importantly, we can build the infrastructure we need to put our future in our own hands. We need to stop buying from companies that hate our guts and start aligning with people who share our America First values. PublicSQ.com is the website. Go there today. Get the app. Links in the description. Let's get into housekeeping. All right. One for one on the intro. Thank you to Public Square. Mm, not a ro- true one for one for yeah. the first time in history. First time in history. <laughs> not a true one for one. I botched it a few times. <laughs> episode 74. It's the Cook episode. Nice. Number 74, the right guard to play right next to me for all those years. Yep. You guys remember Cook, right? I remember him. Yeah, of course. Just going to merge all my realities. Really Truman show this thing. Yep. Um, all right. What's causing heart attacks and blood clots this week? I'm taking my hat off. Um, I had the full dominoes fit. Nice. You notice that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. That ain't nothing, guys. Yeah. Um, It's bold of you to put on a hat right before you get on a camera for a podcast and just hope for the best on the hair. Yeah, I don't really do hair stuff. And do are we acknowledging the beard trim? Yeah. And I trimmed the beard down big time. I don't know how it got that bad. No one even was commenting like, yo, Fleckus, you look schizophrenic. Yo, Fleckus, you look homeless. Yo, you look like the painting a schizophrenic makes of himself when he's at the throes of schizophrenia, you know? Yeah, those no wide hairs. That. Guys, it can't get that bad ever again. What are you talking about? Like, why? At least tell me to trim the sides. Yeah, this is like the gyro meat situation all over again. Nobody warned us. Nobody yeah. told us. Yeah, exactly. No one tells us and you become 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, hey, I was talking about like bulk order gyro meat. No one, no one stopped me. Come on. We had to trim the hair. It looks a lot better this way. Yep. The beard is short. All right. Heart attacks and blood clots this week. Uh, presenting the weather on, on the local news. That'll do it. Who is ready for some sunshine? I know Me. I am. Let's start off with a check of your next weather with meteorologist Alyssa Carlson. She joins us live in the studio. Alyssa, this really is the calm before the storm. Not again. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. Oh. You know, we're going to go ahead and go to break right now. Let's take a break. Yeah, Yeah. let's go to break. (laughs) Man, that's got to be tough if you're that weather woman and you're like, oh, I'm not feeling good. They're about to cut to me. Uh, Doink. They need to have like a symbol for like, get me out. Yeah. Um, That was sad. I'm not even laughing at her. I hope she feels better. And I don't even know if it was Racine related. Uh, But, you know. Some 4chan types did uh, show some evidence of her saying that she was vaccinated So and boosted. So. Take that for what it's worth, right, That'll guys? Do it. That'll do it. Um, do we want to talk about the other headline? Myocarditis cases increased uh, over 130% in the military. Oh, yeah? So that happened. From, that could have been from anything, though. <laughs> yeah, we may never know what. Who knows what that's from. Mm-hmm. There's been some uh, people fighting about the, the lockdowns and the vaccine, stuff like that. There was a Joe Walsh tweet um, where he was fighting with somebody. What does his tweet say? <laughs> Joe Walsh goes, just so I'm clear. 
and Joe Walsh is a famous rhino, if you guys don't know that. He like says he's Republican, but he'll bash Trump at every yeah, turn. He's the worst. But he goes, just so I'm clear, you believe that during COVID, scientists and healthcare officials purposely fucked with our lives? You believe they purposely tried to make things worse for us? And uh, Pedro L. Gonzalez just goes, yes. <laughs> yes, Joe. By a lot. By a mile. <laughs> they closed <laughs> down beaches. They filled sand into the, in the skate parks. Yes, Joe. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Imagine it's like I would reply to that and be like, "You believe that they did it? Write yeah. all those things over again." They just say, "You believe that they didn't?" Just do so that? I'm clear. Just so we're clear. We'll get you on the record. Uh, so yeah, that's the heart attacks and blood clots this week. Um, presenting the news. Feel bad for that lady. Hope she's feeling better. Uh, and we're not making fun of what happened to her. We're just pointing it out. Yeah, just it's a many such cases type scenario here. There's a lot of situations where people who get certain shots of certain things and then they go. You know? Yeah. And that's just what happens. Mm -hmm. And we showed on the show. Mm -hmm. I won't go boom because I don't have the math. Yeah. It would be from just a massive, like, food related heart attack. Yeah. If you were to go down. If I were to go down, you know it's not vaccine related. (laughs) (laughs) It's self inflicted. It's self inflicted. All right. Let's get into some action. We have some good doppelgangers. We've been doing doppelgangers a lot. People love the doppelgangers. uh, But it's also, you know, it's run its course almost. Like, we're towards the end here. You can't just keep doing a bit over and over again. But. When you have good doppels, you can't leave them on the table. So my Richard Rapway doppelgangers are good. Uh, I think people send me some. Some of them are just normal people from your guys' lives. From a yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm. That's the dangerous part. Like that's Mike the, doesn't want to be featured <laughs> on the podcast. So we do have some random people that you guys have come across at like Win Dixie or, <laughs> or Walmart or whatever. But yeah. this is my first Richard Rapway doppelganger. That's actually just you. Yep. Yep. That's a real. That's a polo you would wear. Yep. Next, we have a DM from somebody showing another person. The theater kid. Theater kid looks exactly like Richard Ratboy right in the middle. Skinny Ratboy, so that yeah. shows what I could be. Yeah, potential Ratboy. What Ratboy could reach for. <laughs> um, and then we have this guy, the Antifa guy, right in the middle. There's Richard. With the bear sweater. Undercover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm infiltrating, you know. Watch you out. Know, the FBI is going to do it, so we got to start doing it, too. Yeah. We got to infiltrate. You got a rat. You got to mold Denver Antifa. <laughs> um, all right, next. Uh, oh, so this is Richard Ratboy on his mini bike. You guys remember a few uh, weeks ago we showed Richard Ratboy wiping out trying to do a wheelie. Well, this is proof that he can do a wheelie. Here's him doing a wheelie now. So glad we got that settled. Richard Ratboy can do a wheelie. Uh, next, we have this person who's Richard Ratboy as well, or is that me? I think that's me with a. Oh, no, that's you. That's you. Never okay, mind. That one might be me. All right. Uh, next. We got Richard Rapoy here dancing at SNL. Pa- Pedro Pascal, this guy? Yeah, that's you on the left. You're 5'7", Richard Rapoy. Okay, fair. That looks exactly like you. Kind of. That guy's like uh, Hispanic, right? You have like the same square head and then the glasses. All so. right. So it's a shapes thing. It's a, it's a squ- shape. Squint thing. your eyes. This one's my personal favorite this and most is, damning, yeah. I would say. This is actually you just from, what, a few years ago? Yeah, doing some, what, twink shit? Yeah, you're on your twink shit repping the Patriots. <laughs> Re- Richard Rapway is a patriotic American. There he is. And that's Admiral those are my Levine. doppels. Those are my doppels. All Pretty right. good. I'll go through yours quick because, you know, like I said, this is a dying bit. Not dying, but, you know. It's on its way out. It's on its way out. So Fleck has started his week. He ate some watermelon. He was just eating some watermelon. Is that from the hangover? That's not even good. Yeah. But the beard and the glasses, I think, and the shaved head. Yeah. Um, then you started selling houses. Uh, so you're in the belly group. Belly group. Double entange. <laughs> um, so he started selling houses, but interest rates, they keep hiking them. The bank runs happening. You know, transactions aren't happening as much as they would. So Fleck has sped off on the bike. <laughs> same, That's me too. Same clip. Okay. Fleck has sped off on the bike to his next uh, money-making venture. He started wrestling. He got back into wrestling. So this is you uh, on the left, clearly. And with the wrestling, you started losing some weight, so you became a better wrestler. You became a better version. That's Wrecking Ball Ligurski, by the way. Is that his name? Yeah, he follows us. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I'm happy. He has a sick name, too, Wrecking Ball Ligurski. I'm happy to be him. Yeah, that's a Polish-type name. Um, Then you got really shredded, became the Iranian Hulk. That's where I'm at now. Um, No, no. (laughs) Your week continued on, um, but you you were working out too much, so you had to drive to your next job. So here's you in the car. There's you drive into your next kind of like role and adventure. Sick car. Yeah, nice car. money from that wrestling. Nice car, barefoot driving. Um, So then you started, you you did all the wrestling stuff, and then you got this cooking show. Oh. You got this food show, so you started getting fat again. You started pigging. 
Um, Shout out to my agent. Yep, exactly. And it's the 80s synth wave stuff too. And then that show got canceled, unfortunately, and you started playing poker. I used the, the winnings from the show to play poker. Exactly. And you started degenerately gambling. You started raising with 10-7 suited. Come on. Against 10-8, I have no shot. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, well, maybe you do. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, that was it. Oh, and then I have this last one, this cartoon. Oh, that's just both of us? Yeah, this is some like twink type shit cartoon. This is, is like the cartoon that's in your kids' books at the library that you don't want them to have. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of us. So it's like a daddy boy relationship. Yeah, exactly. I'm um, the daddy. And then last but not least, the AI generated Fleckus on the way cruising to save America with Jerry. There you go. On the mini bike with the American flag. And you're Richard Ratboy. You're the rat in the. You're the rat on the handlebars. Nice. Yep. That's too fat. Mm. And then you ask AI to make a thing about me. It's like I'm not that fat, AI. So it's like if I lose weight, is AI gonna know I lost weight? You're gonna have to tell it. You're gonna have to feed some inputs into the AI. So no. And then AI just collects all data that exists. Mm -hmm. So AI, Fleckus is skinny now. Fleck is skinny. AI, <laughs> Fleck is skinny. Fleck is skinny. Fleck has lost a hunji. <laughs> Like, no, you got to do the work. You can't just get away with it. <laughs> you can't just lie to the AI. I just have to do a calorie deficit. But yep. then does AI know I'm doing calorie deficits every day? Not unless you tell him. Not unless you tell him. AI, please stop making these fat images of me. Because I feel like in 10 years, if I said AI, do a Fleckus thing, it's still going to do fat shit. Well, so try to even lose the weight. <laughs> yeah, you're looking for a way to skip losing the weight? <laughs> Good. All right, that's the end of the doppelgangers. That might be the last doppelganger for a while, unless you guys send us some really compelling stuff that we can't not put on the show. Uh, thank you to everyone who tickled last week's post, last week's video. Got a lot of uh, comments. Juice the algo. It's very helpful. So make sure you tickle the post. We got 100,000 views on last week's episode. Yeah, which is good for us. Yeah, That's great for us. Um, That's a milestone. So keep tickling. Keep tickling. We like the comments. Anything you can do, thumbs up. You know, thumbs obviously. Up, a comment. It juices the algo. Yeah. We need it. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, the algo can be beaten, yeah, but it takes an army. It takes an army and hopefully no copyright strikes. Yeah. Uh, we got smoked on an NFL clip like a month ago. Yeah. So we're recovering from that. Uh, we have a Trump Hall a follower. We talked about this in bonus land a couple weeks or last week, but a follower sent in their Trump Hall. Look at this, guys. They got the Trump Taj Mahal jackets and some Jordans. They got the Trump Taj Mahal jackets and the Trump Playboy uh, magazine. This is 10 out of 10. I salute you, sir. That's just great stuff. Um, I'm happy to inspire someone to go collect those outfits and, and wear those. And this guy almost did it better than Fleckus he with did the Jordans. It yeah. And so Fleckus, <laughs> Fleckus saw these pics and he goes, he turns to me and he goes, wow, this guy did it better than me? Like, how did I miss this? And, uh, and he was like, no, no, wait, I left it all out on the field. I bought every 2X thing there was. Yeah. These are like larges or something. Yeah, so. for a second I was questioning myself, uh, but then I realized what more can you do than besides buy every single 2XL there is? I bought pretty much all the sizes I could find. So yeah. it's like, I can't do anything more than that. And yeah. I have Jordans that match. So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of taking the photos. Fleckus also is like a longtime Jordans wearer. Um, and he's always had like the cool Jordans, like the nineties edition ones. And we were just talking about this the other day that the market got away from him. Fleckus used to buy these shoes and it'd be like 200 bucks, 250, which back at that time was still like expensive for shoes. Like that's a pretty mm -hmm. expensive shoe, right? Jordan sixes, Jordan 11s. Exactly. Um, and now just, uh, and I wear them every day. Exactly. And I blow them out. Yeah. You wear them like at the dog park, like in the do mud, doing dumb shit. Um, but anyway, the market got away from you and now those same Jordans are like six or $700 yeah. and, uh, they caught you flat footed. I was looking online cause I love the feeling of like fresh high tops, like clean high tops that you can put on and then basically wear his house shoes before you wear them outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was looking online. I'm like, oh, maybe I get some new Jordan 11s. Like, oh, the Space Jam 11s. How are those? $1,200. And what did they used to be? $900. And like, I got them for like $275 yeah. when they came out. Like, I, I got Jordan 11s in like 2017 or whatever for like 300 bucks. Yeah. And now all the shoes I have are all worth like closer to $1,000, but they're all blown out because I wear them every day. And I can't get back in to get fresh pairs. Because you can't justify $1,200 shoes, right? can't do that. I already spent all the money on the Trump stuff. Yeah. So I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get into some real important stuff. This is an important housekeeping. We have two pages of housekeeping. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the pyramids might not actually be pyramids. I saw some pretty, um, I saw some pretty compelling evidence that the pyramids are just the tips of these giant monoliths. Mm. And everything else is just buried like 
300 feet down. Yeah. So you, what, you fell for that or what, you, you believe it? compelling evidence. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty compelling, this art, this, this picture. This rendering of uh, what yeah. the pyramids may be. Doesn't that kind of look like something? And then that happened with Easter Island too. Everyone's like, oh, there's Easter Island heads, blah, blah, blah. And they were Easter Island bodies. Mm. Yep, I remember that. So then you get to thinking like, why did all this mud cover everything for 50 feet, 100 yeah. feet? Yeah. And then it's like, maybe there was a huge flood. Yeah, that's compelling. That's very compelling, as very you compelling. said. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just believe this. Hook, line, and sinker. Me too. Good. There you go. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> no critical thinking needed. Zero. All right, let's move on. We have some actual news to get to. Someone shit near the Clintons at a Broadway show. Yeah, fan poops in aisle near Hillary Clinton and Chelsea Clinton at Broadway show. And uh, basically, somebody left two turds incognito near Hillary Clinton and Chelsea, and uh, they discovered the turds in the intermission mm. and quickly cleaned it the up. The Clintons discovered the turds or just someone? No, else? somebody else. Somebody else. But it was close in and proximity. it says fan poops in aisle near, near Hillary Clinton. So it's like, is it a fan of Hillary Clinton or is it a fan of the show? <laughs> just a playwright fan, I guess. I don't know. A fan of Broadway. But anyway. If it's a fan of the Clintons, you could pretty much narrow it down to like a few hundred people. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Donor <laughs> class and whoever else is willing to sell out America. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, that happened to them. They can't even see a Broadway show without smelling that shit. Yeah. Good instincts by the pooper. Good instincts. It's a serial pooper, too. Yeah. It's a, a problem. I don't know. Multiple poops, multiple shows. We'll be checking in on this, but I mean, I'm assuming they'll catch the guy because you don't just poop in Broadway theaters and get away with it. Yeah. Well, there's no, they probably don't have the jurisdiction to extradite them from New Orleans. <laughs> What are you saying? You're the pooper. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on. There, I saw this meme. It was about this limo from like the 80s. Can you read it to me? Yeah. It said, world's longest limousine, American dream, 100 feet long, includes helicopter landing pad and jacuzzi, hinged in the middle, built in the 1980s. Isn't that so nice? Yeah. That limo, that's like a metaphor for America. Yeah. It was 100 feet long, not the most practical doesn't really turn well. We used to reach in this country. Yeah. We used to reach up into the sky. Jacuzzi, helipad. Yeah. Can't make turns, but, you know, you don't need to turn everywhere. Yeah. If you're going straight, you know where you're going. You know where you're going. Yep. And now it's all run down and sad. Yeah. And that's kind of what America, that's what happened to America. Yeah. We used to be this 100-foot-long limo with a jacuzzi and a helipad. And now we're just ran down, left in some place in Ohio or whatever. Yep. We're broken down. They manufacture everything in China now. We're babysitting third worlders who like to flood our southern border. And, uh, you know, we got our hands full with stupid shit. Yeah. So we can't reach for the sky anymore. You know, we can't dream. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. We have a lot to get to. Um, really quick. I just wanted to cover this. Remember that time Ben Shapiro debated that trans person from like 2015? Yeah. I just want to get this out there. We all know that that trans person would have fucked up Ben Shapiro, yeah. right? Scruffed him. Thrashed him. Not even him by close. the back of his neck. Just really okay. rooted him. Cool. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with that. I don't think anyone ever clarified at the time that trans person would have KO'd Ben Shapiro. Thrashed him. All right. Let's go. We have more stuff. <laughs> um, this next section says Rob songs. I don't fully know what that means, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, you know that Outcast song, Hey Ya? Yeah. Hey Ya. Oh, so, oh. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. You know? Oh, oh, don't meet, don't meet your daddy. Yep, yep. And then, so it, Hey Ya becomes Hey Rob, and it's the Outcast song. But then, Hey Rob, Hey Rob, Hey Rob, Rob's boyfriend's back. <laughs> You know? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? Did you is there more on housekeeping? <laughs> I thought you said this was important housekeeping. Uh, and then you know that song Umbop? Yeah. I do. Umbop. Da, 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 umbop. Mm -bop. You, know, you know what I'm gonna say? I think I can predict it, but why don't you tell the audience instead well, of Well, let's hear your guesses. Mm, Rob. Mm, yeah. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You hey, that was hey. Yeah. That ain't nothing. All right, we're on to page two of housekeeping. Hopefully this makes a turn. Oh, man. Yeah. Basically, every song I've heard in the last like six months, there is a Rob song already that I've just done in my head simultaneously. Smart. So, Good use of time. I recommend that for everybody. It keeps your brain active. A lot of people go into autopilot mode and turn their brains off. And I'm a big believer in constantly doing activities or little things in your brain to keep your brain on so you don't become an NPC. So it's like a muscle and you have to flex it by Rob bits 24-7. Yeah. Constantly doing Rob shit. Okay. Um, all right. Page two of housekeeping. We get into some important stuff. A lady ran a marathon in a witch costume. 
Uh, she's a fan of J.K. Rowling, so we like her. She's supporting J.K. Rowling, who's like anti-trans or whatever. Mm -hmm. But where it takes a bad turn is she got a world record for the fastest half marathon in a witch costume. Yeah. Unbelievable. Is that pretty much summed up properly? Yeah. Guinness Book of World Records said, uh, fastest half marathon dressed as a witch. Okay. Is it even true? What do we care? Was what it a fast half marathon? It was half a, marathon. It was one hour fifty five minutes. So I guess decently fast. I don't know. And a girl ran it, right? Yeah, but dressed as a witch. Like nobody cares. That little accelerator. So the Guinness Book of World Records is done, guys. Uh, we've been saying this for episodes now. Yeah. So and, that's and just sad. proof. Congrats to that lady. We're not mad at you. No, that's great. Hey, uh, exploit the system. But the yeah. system's a joke. Yeah. And uh, the Guinness Book of World Records is now Limozilla. It's the same thing as that limo. It's in decay. Yeah. It's in the money grab zone. It's in the sold out to the it third world. It used to be prime and real and respected. Fattest woman. Biggest man. You know, tallest guy ever. Oldest person. Exactly. Easy. Oh, he's 136. Is anyone else 137? No. Fastest uh, ever traveled on land. The land speed record. The either air have speed it or you record. Don't. Yeah. You either got it or you don't. Now it's like air speed record while wearing an upside down Hulk costume and Spider-Man's in the back. And it's like, okay, well, we got to do two records now. One with Spider-Man out of the back and then one with... You're wasting our time, Guinness. Wasting our time. So, All right, moving on to something more important. The reusable toilet paper uh, article or video. Do you ever try reusable toilet paper? You use them like regular and then after you're done, throw them in the bin and then put them in your regular load of laundry and use over and over again. Guys, are you doing this because of the environment? Because if it is... It's all good. Yeah, it's not worth it. That's not worth it to save whatever little piece. I'd rather use Chipotle napkins for two weeks down the road from the trap house in West Hollywood I used to live at. <laughs> Sounds detailed. Then Sounds personal. Yeah. Then do that. Yeah, that's crazy. So you have a shit bucket somewhere in your house the whole time? Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Now we're back to that girl who taught us how to shit in a bag. Yeah. It's the same principles. You throw away these bloody shit rags into a, <laughs> into a bin and then dump it into your washing machine that touches your clothes, and now these 50% blood, 50% shit rags are touching all the things you wear all the time in your washing machine that cleans your clothes? Isn't that f disgusting? Yeah. I think you need a doctor too, buddy. <laughs> I think you need to see a doctor. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? What yeah. is it for? Is it to help the environment? And you look at what everyone else is doing, and they're not doing anything similar to that? And it's like, I don't think the last thing we need to do to fix the environment is to like shit different yeah also bidets exist like you could get a bidet and you don't have shit in your house she just threw the the used rags in a bucket next to the toilet imagine going to that bathroom oh flies are everywhere <laughs> you're like <laughs> it's oh. like an outhouse <laughs> you gotta put the fan on yeah disgusting all so, right don't listen to people like that guys yeah. those quick videos don't listen to people like that uh obviously none of you were um yeah but yeah and the 50-50 ratio is pretty common. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's doctor time, buddy. <laughs> All right. Moving on to something a little less disgusting. Uh, the banking problem, the Credit Suisse. Yeah. Credit Suisse, as you guys know, basically um, got almost liquidated and they forced a sale to um, who? UBS? UBS, Was yeah. it UBS? Yeah. Facilitated by the Swiss government. So that was the another large bank failure. But look what we found exactly a year ago, an article written about Credit Suisse and how great they are. Yeah. Credit Suisse has a diversity champion in Pippa Bunce. And it's this fat man in a dress. <laughs> Who runs the bank. Um, and now the bank's gone. Yeah. And now the bank's gone. All rug the money's pulled. gone. Yeah. You got rug pulled. Um, yeah. So this there's, there's some side-by-side -side pictures of him as a dude. And I think he switches. He goes back and forth. So Credit Suisse just lets anybody do whatever they want. And uh, you can tell how that worked out for their stock price and their yeah. business. As soon as general. we saw that uh, article a year ago, we should have bought puts. Yeah. Yeah, and just <laughs> short, 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 short. All right, last piece of housekeeping, guys. And hold on, like w the woke thing isn't like, oh, the woke thing drove the bank to fail. It's like, no, uh, shitty bonds and uh, like mortgages, mortgage-backed securities that like sold below what their value was sunk the bank. But it is fun to pretend to blame it on a trans person. It is fun to blame it immediately <laughs> on a trans person. 
<laughs> That's so true. Um, yeah. All right. Trump versus DeSantis. Things are heating up. In the, we've always been, uh, well, I've always been uh, team Trump all the way. I liked DeSantis, and I used to say DeSantis will have his time, 24 for Trump, 28 and beyond for DeSantis. Yeah. And I wasn't letting the negative DeSantis talk affect me. I was like, nope, not going to go against DeSantis. I like DeSantis. This negative talk is just because it's the campaign time. No big deal. And now the negative camp, the negative talk against DeSantis is kind of wearing off on me. And it's I'm kind of starting to see it. And then he recently gave like a, a, a I don't know, his views on the Russia Ukraine situation. And it was kind of John McCain esque. Hold Putin accountable. Yeah. What does that mean, dude? Hold Putin accountable as if Russia's the bad guy. It's yeah. like Ukraine's the bad guy. Yeah. Unpopular opinion, but that's what it is. So well, tr- Ukraine's the bad guy and Ukraine is us. Yeah. So that's what it really is, right? So it's like, aren't deep, we paying yeah. their pensions, running their whole thing? It's us. Yeah. If you guys don't think Ukraine is just us now, yeah. we're a proxy war. They're the bodies, we're everything else. Yeah, right. Exactly. Ukraine is deep state. If you're pro Ukraine, you're supporting the deep state. We gave him a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Um, and I hate to see it. I hate to see this DeSantis beef. And obviously Trump started it a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. nobody's without fault. Um, but yeah, he kind of botched the DA thing. He should have made a bigger scene of that. He did a little. Oh, I don't know about what goes into paying a porn star and stuff like that. It's like, guys, you got DeSantis. You got to rise above. Um, and he didn't. And yeah. Cernovich has been on his soapbox that that was a really bad move. And yeah. I agree. And I agree as well. Um, not happy with DeSantis. And it's being more cl- it's becoming more clear. I think everyone was like, oh, DeSantis is our guy. He's so much more likable, whatever. Then you kind of see him in action where you need to take a stand and do the right thing and fully know what's going on. And then you say things like Putin needs to be held accountable. Take a break. Take a couple of years off, buddy. Yeah. And like foreign relations is the area where a president has a lot of power. Right. So it's like your foreign relations, uh, you know, whatever your beliefs are, they need to be pretty strong. Yeah. And also America is kind of, in my mind, like a bankrupt, distressed asset. We don't produce anything. We don't make anything. We're We're just fastly declining. Yeah. We we just fudge the numbers and we have bankers and we have fake computer jobs. We print money. Yeah. And we don't produce anything. So it's like I think Trump can handle that like a like a bankrupt business that kind of needs to like cut its stop the bleeding and kind of just like, you know, consolidate. What do we have going for us? What can we cut and reduce spending wise? I think like a Trump person, a a Trump type, a billionaire with a ton of businesses can handle that better. Ron DeSantis, last time I checked, is worth 350 K. Yeah, that's his which can be a positive, can be a negative. That's a negative because Um, you see what they're doing to Trump. They sue him a million times. They try to ruin his life. If DeSantis does what he needs to do as a right wing, as a Republican candidate and a Republican president, they're going to do the same thing to him. They're going to ruin his life. But in his bank, he's going to have a couple hundred thousand dollars to fight it. You're toast like that. So you either play ball or you get destroyed. I think we need Trump to kind of jump on that grenade and then let DeSantis take over once Trump gets us back on track. Yeah, and then the whole thing is like this grand jury for the Alvin Bragg, New York, Stormy Daniels indictment that was coming. Um, It's like DeSantis did that speech where he didn't have his back. He kind of did a little jab at Trump and then the indictment didn't even happen. So it's like, oh, shit. Like I kind of got played a little bit there. He got played a little bit. And then also DeSantis, who's DeSantis's like like right hand man? Who are his people in his ear telling him what to do? They're kind of like Paul Ryan types, like the neocons, like the rhinos. They're not based MAGA people. They're kind of people that want to go back to how things were. Yeah. And I don't, uh, yeah, I don't like this. I don't like the beef, you know? Um, I want both candidates to like kind of sustain their image. And, you know, when you start doing shit slinging, both people get shit on them, right? Like no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the end of housekeeping. We are coming now into a very important cringe of the week. First clip is the uh, trans circus lineup. Uh, it's all these like trans people giving testimonies about why they're going to kill themselves because of Rob DeSantis, or Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Hi, I was once a trans youth and now I'm a happy 22 year old trans adult student at New College of Florida. Happy. This is my health care. Ma'am. OK, don't tread on it. Senator Yarbrough has militarized the Florida GOP into the genital Gestapo. Ron DeSantis wants trans people dead. You are committing genocide. I grew up in Germany in the aftermath of <laughs> Nazis and what you people are doing is no different. This is transphobic, it is cruel, and you really should be ashamed. What you are doing by signing this bill 
is an act of war. The way it is as it is now, my people will die. And that blood, if you support this bill, will be on your hands. I'm 12 years old, I'm not buying it. If you pass this bill, many of us will die. I deserve to live as long as all of you. We are humans too. When I was two, I wanted to kill myself. By the time I was 15, I attempted to slice my own breasts off. I went to the ER because I was bleeding out. I'd also like to implore you all to remember that less than a week ago, gun, laws were, uh, gun law restrictions were loosened. And anyone who thinks it's a good idea to come and take my child, I dare you. <laughs> Every time I look at you, it, you guys in this committee, I realize more and more that you guys want to commit trans genocide and that our blood is on your hands. I am the parent of a transgender child who is almost eight years old and we are at the beginning of our journey and what you're doing is taking away life-saving potential opportunity for me and my family. Every 45 seconds a trans person makes an attempt on their life, meaning that one happened every two speakers that you saw this very moment. Ten years ago that was me and one year ago that was one of my siblings. And tomorrow it will be the children of people in this room. Your vote on this bill determines if that 45 seconds becomes 30. They really just rolled them out. Real circus shit. Everything ends in people getting murdered. Yeah. Either genocide or self-inflicted. It's either suicide or you're going to kill us or you're Nazis. Uh, real of, hyperbole. Yeah. A lot of genocide. A lot of, not a lot of bodies for the genocide they claim is going on. Yeah. I haven't seen one, to be honest. They really just rolled those people out. I mean, we already know suicide goes hand in hand with that sort of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Is that because of us now? Is that because of us trying to stop it? Yeah. They think we're like the worst hateful people, Nazis. They, they don't respect us at all. But when it comes to our opinion about them, that might make them kill themselves. Yeah, that really matters. They really, they watch the show. <laughs> We've said that before too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, like, oh, we don't care. We don't listen to you. But if you do this. Yeah, you're a Nazi. But I'm if gonna... you say I'm mentally ill, I'm going to kill myself because I care about your opinion, I guess. So these people don't have any real life problems mm -hmm. is what I'm noticing. It's yeah. like you're in the first world. You probably grow up upper middle class. Everything's kind of just handed to you. And people naturally like to overcome problems and solve problems in their lives and like thrive through it. Yeah. And these people now need to like they don't have enough problems. So they need to create these problems that don't exist. So Ron DeSantis is starting a genocide there's something I can go fight for. That's a big, that's a huge thing. Ron yeah. DeSantis starting a genocide. They're wasting the indomitable human spirit on a useless endeavor, right? Like, yeah. They're kind of like spinning their wheels for nothing. Yeah. So these people don't have enough problems. Here's a person who does have problems. Yeah, this lady here, she lives in a pipe. She's got real problems. She doesn't have time to be non-binary. You see that plastic? That's a straw. And she puts it in the water and she drinks. But she's got to, she, she doesn't need and to be transgender. She lives in the sewer. <laughs> you think that person really lives there? I don't know. I mean, it looks like they got something going on. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> should we check on the other transgender threats? Uh, and then this next clip, this lady is a female presenting non-binary. She's another one who's creating more problems for herself that don't exist. Let's let her go. As a non-binary person who presents woman, my relationship with the word girl is very complicated. With some people, if they call me girl as like a colloquial term, it's fine. Like I'm with my girl or hey girl, what's up? But for me, I'm only comfortable using that word for me, and this is my perspective, if they understand and respect the full extent of my gender identity. I personally identify as both a woman and non-binary. I have a video on it, check it out. So if someone I know knows that about me and also respects that about me, goes, hey girl, I'm okay with them saying hey girl because they're not saying, hey, you're a girl. But if someone who doesn't know that I'm non-binary or doesn't know the full extent of my gender identity calls me girl, hey girl, I don't like it. Because I don't know them well enough to know if they're saying, hey friend, hey, what's up? Or, hey, you are a girl. Hi girl, hi woman. Because I don't know them and I don't know if they... If I don't so this is an example of non-fun lore. This is not fun lore. We all have lore that we kind of have in our lives. Uh, mine's like Rob Smith lore is an example of some mm -hmm. lore of mine. Mini bike, you Mini know, bikes. Trump stuff. So this, like, that's my lore. This is like not fun gay lore. It's a homework assignment. Yeah. It's basically like, uh, you know, telling you what you need to know and you're like writing it down and being like, okay, so in this context, I'm worried about her feelings and all this. Hey girl, you're uh, wasting your time. Yeah. Just be a normal looking girl. And you are, you are. 
you don't even have to do the non-binary thing. Like you're you're a nice looking girl. Yeah. And it's funny because I think there's something deep down in this uh, girl's mind where she's like, I am a kind of cute girl. Like I can be kind of normal and cute. Yeah. But I like the non-binary stuff too. I like the attention. Yeah. So that's not good lore. If you're non-binary, fuck up your face. Fuck up your hair. Get a real short haircut. Buzz your head. Put your eyebrows. Make them yellow. You know? Yeah. Do some real dumb shit. Hide your genetics. P- pierce the inside of your mouth, like in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's not fun lore. I'm, the Rob stuff is fun lore. This is non fun gay lore. Yeah. My for sure. f- gay lore is fun. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. The lady who needs to dilate her kid's front hole. This is bad. But with her, I'm worried about like her mental well-being, and her dilation. The minute she leaves my house, we have a dilation problem. That is a concern. When you don't have that watchful eye, they tend to go back to old patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep and taken the dilator and put the lubrication on it and said, here, you take this and you put it in your vagina. If not, I will. But Jazz is bad, even when I'm home once a day. I would be so mad if she goes away to college and that thing seals up. I that thing. Bring her it, neck. We agree there, mom. Yeah. It is a thing. And it's like mom's finishing the job. Like the kid's not even fully into it, not even doing what needs to be done for the end of the process. And the mom needs to finish that job. Yeah. And so for those of you who don't know, dilator, um, when they do the trans surgery on you, you they create some sort of crude front hole if you will, Mm -mm. and uh, it needs to constantly be opened up because naturally your body heals wounds. Mm. Um, And so your body doesn't think you're trans. Your genetics, you know, don't think. So it tries to close up the wound. Um, And you got to pry it open with metal bars, lubricated. And leave it, and it smells. Yeah, it's stinky. Imagine, I was thinking, imagine explaining this situation to like an Italian mobster in the 1940s. Hey, so dude, <laughs> dude, it's a girl. The guy thinks he's a girl and they chopped it off. You but gotta, the hole closes up. You got to keep it open. Uh, I don't know, kids these days. But hey, anyway, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you got to use a metal thing. It's called a dilator. You got to keep it open. You got to <laughs> yeah. keep the hole open you made. They cut the wiener off. Yeah. So um, bad. And this is like clearly some sort of reality TV show about it. So mom loves the attention. Mom loves getting together, drinking some wine with the girls and talking about the uh the, the front hole. Yeah, she's got some like social credit now because we're our society's so backwards that that's like a good thing. That person would be in jail. Yeah. Like, oh, you chopped off your kid's dick and now you're trying to put stuff into the hole and keep it open? It's like, hmm, that's highly illegal. Yeah. <laughs> that's a crime. Yeah. Same with the doctor who did the surgery. Oh, it's, yeah. It's like, oh, you, it was a 16-year-old boy and you chopped off their genitals and left an open wound that they you're forcing them to keep open. Yeah, we've been investigating and we have a pretty good case against you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, enjoy taking pills forever. This person, you're going to take pills, hormonal pills, injections, whatever, and dilating your front hole. And uh, yeah, enjoy. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. This next clip is of this is like a comedy thing. It's just a baby who's like saying their first words. Um, but if you if this was the baby of a progressive leftist. They might be taking some action. The baby's saying, I'm gay, I'm gay. If you have the wrong parents, they might go, we got, we got to get him a boyfriend. Or, it starts tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we got to turn you into some sort of drag queen thing. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the pronouns not optional guy, the one you love. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is my favorite. A friendly reminder to all the cis out there, just because it's called preferred name and preferred pronoun, that does not make it optional. And if you have trouble accepting that, then maybe instead you can accept my size 13 steel toe on your trachea. We could start there, if you prefer. Don't call me cis lady. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Dude, so threats, trans threats. They threaten suicide, they threaten that there's going to be a genocide, and then they threaten you with their size 13 yeah. boots. Which is the same size I wear. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, exactly. It's a nice bunch. Either violence or suicide. Though That's what these two pe- these, these, these groups are up to. Those are the two options. Yeah, which way, Western man? Violence or suicide? Because we're, we're ready for both. Um, this person should be singing, so it was your heart on the line. Yeah. This is not good. You should be focused on that type of shit, you know? Yeah, that's where yeah. you're naturally fit in. 
Yeah, for sure. You know what's interesting, too, about these trans people? Hmm. And I'm thinking about doing this for a street video, if there's ever, like, a trans protest. If you go to the trans protest and you talk to these people and you say, hey, what do you think about student loan debt? They would go, oh, it should be wiped out. There shouldn't be any student loans. It should all be forgiven. 18-year-olds don't know that they're basically signing a predatory contract that they can't pay out. They can't pay back. We need to you know, eliminate student loan debt. And then you have that answer. You know that's what they'll say. Yeah. And then it's like, so if an 18-year-old is too young to agree to a student loan agreement, you're telling me that the, the four-year-old or the eight-year-old or the 12-year-old knows that they want to be transgender and we should switch their gender and give them hormones and therapy and surgeries, gender-affirming care? Don't add up. That don't add, That's called don't add up. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to not add up correctly when you look at it like that, right? Yep. So if you're a street reporter and you want to get to that first, there's a great idea. That's I might an easy do question, it. yeah. Yeah, I might hit that one. Uh, Bo Diddle, our boy, got punched by a, by a lady. <laughs> the man came out. <laughs> yeah. Let's let it run. Locked him in the face, and then he has to go collect his own trans person for arrest. He assaulted me. <laughs> her. He said her. Uh. <laughs> so Bo got, you. Yeah, Bo got clocked by that man in the outfit. Oh, look, a girl's titty. It's like, it's a dude's nipple. I don't know what yeah. you're, you didn't get anybody. Same as me doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, Bo Diddle out in the streets. We love Bo Diddle. He's a fan of the show and a friend of the show, more importantly. Uh, he got clocked by a trans person. That's good action. Yeah, we love you, Bo. Keep it up. Uh, make sure you guys go follow him. His links are in the description. We wow. love Bo Diddle. Wow. Um, all right, let's keep it going. Uh, let's see. The drag the drag is holy, the priest. Oh, let's hear from this this let's, guy. Yeah, let's hear from the church. Drag is holy. There has been an assault on the rights of drag performers in this country, and we must call out the hypocrisy and the injustice. Jesus called himself a mother hen longing to gather up her chicks. Gender is a construct, you see. And if Jesus can be a mother hen, then you can dress in drag. Mm. What, is, what does Jesus say about people who abuse and mislead children? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, if Jesus ran into a trans person, he'd do this. Mm. <laughs> Heal you, my son. And they would go, ah, the demon. And it would come out. <laughs> the demon would come out. And Jesus would get rid of the demon pretty easily. Yeah. And the person would go back to normal. Yeah. He would fix the ailment. He wouldn't enable. <laughs> yeah. So, he yeah. Go, this, oh, you look great. This priest, it's like whatever church you belong to, it's like, I'm about to discredit this whole thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Imagine going to that church like your whole life for like 20 years, and then the priest is just up there saying that, and it's like, oh, man, have I been... I've been going to the wrong place for too long. Like, yeah. Am I, am I going to hell now? Well, I hope to, I hope that these guys face consequences, you know, um, and their attendance is down and their donations are down. Like how could you possibly donate to a church that says drag is holy? And it's like, that's his clickbait hook line. And yeah. it's like, man, but you've, you've said it, buddy. You're done. Uh, you don't speak for anybody and yeah. uh, goodbye. Nice sash. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the D trans person, that'll be our last clip of the trans part of cringe. We still have a lot of cringe left, though. This is important. I was a mentally ill child, and I was able to consent to removing my breasts permanently. And I, I also heard more or less. I heard more people telling me I would regret this tattoo than I would regret getting my breasts permanently removed at such a young age. So that is why I felt necessary to speak. Thank you for hearing Isn't me. that like an important message? Yeah, yeah. hugely. Sure. Get that tattoo. That's, people gave that person a harder time for the tattoo than chopping their boobs off. Yeah, and uh, the tattoo's still on. But yeah. speaking about trans or regret, that's going on right now. Um, I also saw that girl, Riley, uh, the swimmer who spoke out against Leah Thomas, mm -hmm. was uh, said something like anecdotally. I, I didn't really look into this, but she said that uh, in California or whatever example she was using, 
uh, for Chloe Cole, California covered insurance for all her transitioning stuff. And now when it's detransition time, the insurance is like, well, that's elective and they're not paying for anything. So uh, interesting. It's good to see how that plays out because mm-hmm. that's important. And also that speaker started that off with, I was a mentally ill child. Yeah. So good self-awareness. I know. And that's good, honest stuff that the current trans people don't really want to accept. Yeah, hundred um, percent. All right, let's move on. They'd to, rather be enabled, right? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the whole I, part of the movement is enabling. But then they say, "I'm going to kill myself because I'm so mentally distressed." And the people go, "Well, what do I want to do? Do I want to have a person kill themselves because I don't accept them, or should I just accept them and then let them go worse further from the truth?" And obviously everyone's picking the latter. I also saw something anecdotally about two studies about children with gender dysphoria. And this was kind of like before the trans craze. And it said all, like 70 to 90 percent of uh, young kids who have gender dysphoria just straighten out. Yeah. So it's like now it's get the surgery, do the stuff. Um, if you're a parent and you have a kid who's even thinking about this kind of stuff, it's like the first thing you do is lock down the computer. The second thing you do is start spamming, um, detransitioner stories. And then, you know, in the extreme case, if you're the cool dad, you go trans too. Yeah. To embarrass the kid. <laughs> just embarrass them just to embarrass they come them. back. Start wearing the dress, dad. That's interesting. Cause I was thinking about like what my parents would do if I was trans as a kid. And it's like, I can't even think of a hypothetical like that because, I was just so programmed to grow up to be a man where it's like, I liked football. My dad played football. My older brother played football. I play football. Like I want to like work out to be better at football. Like I always had like this plan and vision that was kind of like instilled in me into things that like my family liked to do as well. We like to play football. We like to go outside, play sports, be competitive, be better than other people like competitively in sports. So it's like my whole life has been competing against other young men and then growing with that. So it's like I, the option of like, oh, I'm a girl and I want to. <laughs> it's like that would never even come because yeah. from a young age, I was just raised so correctly. You were groomed. I was groomed in a good groomed way. Groomed into f- a football star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so it's like. And it works out. And that's that's also like a, a broader concept where it's like a lot of kids want to do the opposite of what their parents did or like break away. And it's like it's cool to be like a fifth generation like iron worker. Or bricklayer, or you know, some or unique cop, or fireman. It, exactly, and it's it's like, hey, a couple of generations of your exact genetics have done great with this. So you want to go be a painter? You know, yeah. it's like do what you're kind of destined to do. You know, fulfill your role almost. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the trans stuff is just a total derailment. For the trans um, people, they just tell their kids, "You could be whatever you want. Like whatever you want, we'll be okay with." And the kids looking around, like, "Well, I have my sister's Barbies and her dresses." I have like glitter and whatever. I have nail polish from mom. Like they pick from anything. Like for me as a kid, it's like, oh, you want to play? You want you want to do stuff outside of school? What do you want to do? You can play football. You can play lacrosse. You can play baseball. Yeah. You can, you know, join the chess club. You can play trumpet. Like all my options were just like I had like ten options, and I was going to take three really seriously. Yeah. And those three were all like male things that you do as a young man to become an older man. And it was never like, oh, pick whatever you want, because that's like no structure and kids don't know anything. You're not going to it's not really smart to give them the opportunity to pick anything. Yeah. So it's like I had oh <clears throat> football. You don't like football. You can play lacrosse. You don't like lacrosse. You could play baseball, but baseball is a little too competitive. You're doing you, something. After you live school. in the Northeast. Yeah. You probably play lacrosse. You can get into a you can get a lacrosse scholarship pretty easily compared to baseball. You'd have to go to the minor leagues and be a pro. You're probably not going to be a pro. You sure you don't like football? You're gigantic. Your dad played (laughs) in college, like, you know. Yeah. So it's like as long as you give the options and they're all within, like, acceptable young men stuff, let the kid pick from that. If you give them no options, they're going to pick weird shit because they don't know anything. Yeah. All right. Moving on out of the – we're still in cringe, but we're out of, like, the trans shit. Mm -hmm. And we're moving into this clip. A woman uh, who does, like, cooking videos and recipe videos – she did one uh, where she cooked some nice chicken dish and she got a lot of kickback and flack and hate comments because people are saying white people don't season their food right. Yeah. So this is, uh, I'd, I'd call it kind of a cold war that yeah. has been bubbling under the surface for a long time where a lot of black people comment about seasoning and they go, oh, they didn't even season their food. You got to season that chicken. You got to pour as much garlic powder on that chicken as you possibly can. So let's play the original video. This woman kind of stumbled into this. 
She doesn't. Yeah, she didn't realize it was a full cold race war. She didn't realize how racially motivated all this shit yeah. was. So. This is a PSA to the seasoning police on this app. If in your brain you only view seasoning as things like garlic powder, onion powder, or maybe something like rosemary. If this is what you view as seasoning and seasoning only, let me pose you a question. What does this come from? Granulated garlic, what is that? Garlic? Onion powder, what does that come from? Dehydrated onion? Let's take a look at the spice rub. Dehydrated garlic, onion, and bell pepper. I sauteed those bell peppers along with my onion and garlic. Hmm, what is so funny to me is if I had just doused my chicken in this rub, in this rub alone, the seasoning police would be out of my comments. They wouldn't even be in there. But the second it's fresh garlic or fresh onion or fresh bell pepper, it's automatically not seasoning. And let me just say one last thing. If you're one of those people that loves to watch cooking competitions and a judge says something is under seasoned, they're talking about salt. Under seasoning your food means there's not enough salt in it. Salt is gonna bring out the flavor of onion, the flavor of garlic, the flavor of whatever random spice rub that you have. And let me just say that if your food tastes a little off, it's not because you need to add more powder. It's most of the time because you need to add more salt or some sort of acid like lemon juice or vinegar, okay? So there you go. She really laid it out. She doesn't realize that the seasoning police is all black people. For the most part. She <laughs> doesn't know that. Obviously, that's for the most part. And then some white people who act black, they get in on that too. Or Hispanic people, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, or whatever. So she didn't know what she was getting into. And uh, right-wing Twitter has been ablaze with memes of this girl. And, uh, you know, they praised her because she put it so eloquently, right? Yeah. Uh, like, that's fresh vegetables are better than the powdered dehydrated versions, obviously. And it's like you use the dehydrated powders because you're not cooking with fresh vegetables. Exactly. So it's like the people who are using the seasoning and overusing the seasoning, they're the ones who are actually cooking incorrectly because the ideal would be you just add onions and real garlic. Yeah. And so uh, let's show an example of uh, a, a fighter of this Cold War yeah. who overseasons the something. opposition. Yeah. Let's see what they're up to. Platinum. Now y'all know I got to pop it with the Tonys first. Tony Sun, Satchery's. Got my garlic powder right here. Three full oh things. Oh my God, this is going to be platinum. Look at the onion powder. Three full now onion powders. Now what y'all know about that paprika? That paprika be something serious, I'm telling you. Got my lemon pepper seasoning right here. Oh my God. The Old Bay. Now let's dash that acid in there. Now look, what that say? Extra spicy. It's not going to be that spicy though because I'm going to balance my flavor. Now let's go. That all that seasoning, he poured like a bucket of powder into that. That's disgusting. And you basically need one of those crab boil things, maybe some Tony Saturies, maybe a little extra. Yeah. And then you throw lemons in there. Yeah. You know? And then there's some other clips from the uh, Cold War opposition of what they're up to in the kitchen. We started, yeah, the Cold War, the the first bullet was fired, obviously, by this girl. We didn't want to go to war. Nobody did. We just would let it bubble silently but under. Now that we're in the war. We're going to show what the opposition's up to cooking wise. You ever see these people who cook? I mean, who clean? these people? What do you mean? <laughs> these people, Are these people online who clean, who clean their vegetables with soap. Yeah, they're chicken with soap in the sink like that. So people are rubbing salt like or soap, Dawn soap on chickens. And like we have. And this is kind of blurring the lines between irony, satire, and like real reality. But there are so many videos of this. We're going to play a few in the background. They all wash the chicken. They're all... You get salmonella all over your kitchen. Yeah, and it's actually... Or in your bathtub. Some of these people are cleaning vegetables and chicken in the bathtub. Yeah, and uh, you don't need to wash chicken. It actually spreads the raw chicken germs across your sink and everything. Uh, so you have to do a deep cleaning. Yeah. Um, and so this is kind of like, you know, hey, it's time to wake up. Spices are actually vegetables most of the time, and you don't need to wash your chicken. And there's been some some serious accusations as well thrown, uh, some people eating cornstarch. But I've we're, heard we're, that. We're not going to get into that too much, but... Uh, I've seen some videos of certain groups of people eating cornstarch by the block. Yeah, which is insane to me. Um, but so basically, it's like, it's kind of this low level, low IQ thing where you just say, oh, that's not seasoned enough it, without understanding the art of cooking and without understanding like how to get something juicy or how to get some, the, the result you want or the flavors. Um, 
And so, you know, garlic and onion, fresh garlic and fresh onion, white people love that shit. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I know it seems like black people like the powder. Yeah, exactly. And then also, like, let's compare setups. This lady's kitchen is sick. Yeah. She's got a great kitchen. She's got a ton of supplies. She's got an organized pantry. I, I trust what she's putting together as opposed to people cooking in the backyard, pouring all this, the dust on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we move on yeah, to the, the, so yeah, the, the, the cold race spice seasoning war just went hot guys. Accusations are flying insults, missiles everywhere. Yeah. So, um, we'll see who survives. I think most white people understand that, you know, there are certain cultures that do cooking really well. Italian, French cuisine. The Italians taught the world how to eat. What's that from? <laughs> it's Uncle Junior says that in The Sopranos. We taught the world how to eat, but he was kind of senile at that point. So yeah, but the uh, French they do great. French, yeah. So where did you ever have Ethiopian from? food? <laughs> no, I haven't. Well, yeah, had... you sit on the ground and you and you, you and you run like this gloop through this it, starchy gloop and through you it. Eat it through your hands. That's also another thing with the cold, uh, the cold seasoning war, the cold racial food war. Uh, everybody goes. Mm, no immigrants. Hope you enjoy. Better not want the Ethiopian food, you know. Yeah. And it's like, take it or leave it. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. No immigrants. It's like, how oh, about your street tacos? And it's like, oh, the the meat that they buy stolen from Walmart because the person stole it. A street rat stole it and sold it to him for thirty cents on the dollar. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All, uh, good. All good. We're good. Yeah. I yeah. don't need more Berea tacos, guys. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. And then the obviously there's uh, traitors to the spice seasoning race cold war yeah and those are mostly obviously white women the white liberal women white liberal women and so uh this is a headline from it says loyola professor claims organized pantries are rooted in racist and sexist social structures the new pantry porn trend is a modern status symbol for white women the chicago professor says it's like having a nice pantry is racist now because not everyone has that it's like wouldn't you want to strive and hope to have a nice pantry one day with all your stuff organized perfectly and jarred nicely and in nice rows no, I want to dig around looking for a garlic powder that's unorganized so that I can be race equal. Because I've never cooked with actual garlic before. Yeah. <laughs> garlic is sticky. Uh, but. Yeah, so it says, historically, Drenton says the tidiness is intertwined with status and a person's messiness often breeds assumptions about a person's capacity to be responsible and respectable. Oh. So there's this whole world out there now where people go, oh, uh, all your actions, they don't mean anything for your character. You yeah. know, it's like all these little things you do every day, they don't actually add up to make you who you are. Yeah. You have a nice organized kitchen and pantry. It's because you're white and you're racist. Um, like I judge a messy kitchen. If I'm in someone's house and they have a messy kitchen, it's like, what's going on here? You yeah. Know? So Be- it's like what, you know, nice or bad. What's better? Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. Uh, standards or no standards. You should never have standards. Right. Yeah. Is the point of most of because these some racial people don't have standards and you don't want to be against them because of the, their the color of their skin because that's racist. Yeah. So now no one can have standards because the you know, that's uh, how it goes. Exactly. And again, this country used to reach up. We used to reach up to the sky and dream of yeah. a great pantry in an organized house. And now it's uh, racist, sexist, anti-gay. Donald Trump. Go away. Go away, yeah. Uh, I have a quick question for you before, because we're kind of finishing the food talk. Okay. Uh, before we move on. Um, wh- how would Rob Smith uh-huh. leave, what kind of Yelp review would Rob Smith leave if he went to a tapas place, but he didn't really like the, he didn't really like what he got? <laughs> what would his angle be? All right. Um, okay, so Rob, knowing Rob, and the tapas, he's complaining about it's too small. Two yeah. small of dishes? Yeah, yeah. Well, so Rob, and leaving, he's leaving a review? He's leaving a review. Rob would start off by saying, first of all, I know tapas. <laughs> yeah. He would make a big show of saying how much tapas experience he has. And he'd been say, to Spain, probably. I've been to Spain. I've been to Barcelona. He'd say it with a th. Yeah. Um, so I know tapas. That being said... This tapas place, the dishes were incredibly tiny. Yeah. So he'd do a big preamble about how much he knows tapas how much he's, before he criticized. How much criticized. tapas he's had, how he's had tapas in Europe, and then that being said, that was the key. Yeah. So you got that correct. Yeah, 100%. Nice job. We're, we know what Rob's like. Yeah. Um, and then here's a final meme from the seasoning debate. Uh, it says, white people don't season, they rivers. <laughs> Fucking, oh I died at that. You know, so. I looked at a graph of all of the pollution in the ocean based mm-hmm. on country. Yeah. And we're not even on it. Yeah. It's all Asia. It's all Asia. They just dump it. Yeah, they dump it. We're, we're lumped in with the rest of the world. So I'm up in the littering. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to even this out. Start spitting in the room. No, it's I'm, like giant, all these Indonesia, India, Vietnam, the Philippines, they just let it they fly. They just dump it. China, China doesn't care. China laughs as you pay for uh, carbon credits while they dump shit yeah, in the you ocean. you dilate your child's hole. We laugh and dump we, the trash <laughs> in the ocean. <laughs> we laugh. Um, Dan Crenshaw used this. So you're using a, a graphic that Dan Crenshaw used. That's okay. Yeah, that's good. I want you to admit that. Sometimes your views overlap with Dan Crenshaw. I just want to make yeah. you acknowledge that. Well, that's fine, and that's actually me proving I'm fair. Exactly. Dan Crenshaw is a Muppet rhino, uh, but if you post something that makes sense, it doesn't It doesn't not make sense because Dan Crenshaw is a Muppet rhino. Exactly. So I'm fair. Fair and balanced. Very Dan true. Crenshaw is not. Yep. Um, so we'll see where the spice war goes. We'll see if there's any escalations or any counterattacks. Yeah. Um, good but, idea. Um, all right, we have two more clips left in cringe. We're gonna go kind of fast through them because we're uh, going too long. Yeah. So we're gonna do the first one. The girl pretends to clean for TikTok. Sorry. So the mom's laughing at her. The girl's doing a TikTok where it says, I do the cooking, I do the cleaning. And it's just a quick second of her pretending to clean for the TikTok. So she doesn't actually clean to help keep the house nice for her family. Her loved ones. Her loved ones. She pretends to clean for the 10,000 people that see the TikTok. And they go, ooh, I got double thumbs. People liked it. Ooh. Very hard. It's very hard to, to describe what's going on to someone from 1850. Yeah. There's a lot of things in the world that it just like would not make sense to those people. So she just pretends to do it for like 10 seconds so that the video box can go to everybody out there. She doesn't actually do it. She can't actually clean. She yeah. can't actually cook. She's never, in fact. Um, yeah. So dark, dark yeah, times, TikTok. Dark times. And now the TikTok debate is uh, heating up. They're having congressional hearings today and uh, trying yeah. to get it banned, maybe. Ban it. Ban it because I don't even use it or know how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. So I don't care. Ban I'm it. jealous. <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. jealous of people who have I followers. want everyone to come back to Instagram where I am. Yep, exactly. Um, okay, last clip of Cringe of the Week. The guy got sucked by a farmer. I was kind of fucked up. Some white guy told me, he was like, hey, put some peanut butter on your dick. Go to my fucking little farm. <laughs> All right. So I pulled up to the little farm, put down my pants. I had a little bit of peanut butter on my fucking tip. That motherfucker's just licking away, licking away, licking away. I got 50 bucks plus another 50 bucks. 100 bucks. <laughs> Couldn't just add that before you said I got 50 and then another 50? Why would you? So it's like, what's the worst thing you've ever done for money? That. And then it's like, what's the worst thing you've ever done ever? And it's like, say that on camera. You could not pay me $1,000 to admit that, even if I never did it on camera. Like, you don't even realize the worst thing you've ever done is actually second worst, and then the first worst is happening right now. You're telling everybody about <laughs> it, 100%. So, that's weird. And we have to be fair and balanced, right? Because we did all the Girl Street interviews, and we kind of trashed them. Yep. Guys can be trashy and dumb, too. Uh, this guy got 100 bucks for some peanut butter dick shit. Yeah, which is going to take us out of cringe and into Urban Decay. This week's Urban Decay section uh, is brought to you by the Bonus Land episode that comes out every Monday. Guys, we're doing 30-minute extra episodes. Do you love the show? Do you love that it's longer? It's like an hour and a half now. Do you wish we had an extra episode that came out at another day during the week? Well, do I have news for you? Every Monday, there's a 30-minute Bonus Land episode that comes out, and it's for a discounted price, $4 a month. It's not really a discount, but I'm just, it's discounted from what I could charge. It's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap relative to 10 bucks, right? Yeah. Come on. That's not, it's it's more than half of 10 bucks yeah. or less than half of 10 bucks. It's 40% exactly. It's, yeah. I, you know, I'm sure it's close to the math. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you guys love the show, you'd love the extra episode. We go into certain topics. We cover fun things. Uh, this week in bonus land, we are covering some funny stuff. We have a whole page of funny stuff. Um... You guys are going to want to check it out. Yeah, some good clips, some weirder type stuff. Bonus Land is more loose. We're not as structured, and it gets, you know, we go off the rails sometimes. We go off the rails. We have a great group, about 2,000-plus people. Almost, we're trying to get to 3,000 people. So join Bonus Land. It's worth it. If you're this deep in the show, you clearly like the show. It's $4. Just sign up. Forget about it. Maybe don't even watch the episodes. Let me just charge you 4 bucks a month until you realize. <laughs> 
because that happens too. Yep. All right, Urban Decay. This clip went very viral this week. Um, there is a subway deranged subway racist who's harassing a man, his wife, and their child. Uh, and we're going to go over that and see what could have been a better result. Yeah, and this is the guy who just hurls racial epithets at everybody. He calls everybody monkey. He goes, oh, monkey. yeah, white monkey. He calls white people monkeys. He calls Asians monkeys. There's many viral videos of this guy. He's a menace. He's a menace to the New York subway system. Yep. Take them back to Europe with y'all. Yeah, me too. Gay-ass player, Caribbean, African shit, she's annoying. Fucking like gay-ass gorilla looking. Shut up, your ugly body. Nasty-ass, mutating, permutating, corrugating, idiot-laden skin, 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 skin. Shut up, your body don't even last long enough. I'm gonna look younger than them by the time he's my age. I don't care about them ugly-ass kids in your race. Shut up. Fucking plastic-ass body. Debilitated, innervated, emasculated people, incapacitated, indisposed, emaciated, continuating, tenuous body. I don't care about you. Shut up, you white monkey. You a dog in this country. You're a fucking dog. You're nothing over here. You are a dog. Shut up. I'm black American. I'm over you. There's a letter between M and O. <laughs> so that guy just needs some reparations. Yeah. He give him five mil. He'll be occupied. Give him a dollar house, five million bucks. 90k for 250 years and he's gonna be chill yeah what kind of content does that guy consume what's he watching he's watching those pyramid stuff he's like <laughs> the pyramids go deep and we built them <laughs> we uh, we're the real jews he's on some deep deep level schizo shit um and so and he calls people monkey yeah and he and got we, aggressive he was walking in monkey yeah. he's talking about europeans go back to europe i'm a foundational black american yeah, he calls us monkey, and it's like we laugh at that. And like, yeah. I'm not, if someone called me a monkey, I go, okay, <laughs> okay, I, I know what you are, but yeah. what am I? You'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would that would be pretty good. Come yeah. back, Uno reverse card, hand it to him. I don't know. Um, He's a food seasoner. Yeah. Oh, he goes. He squirts the garlic powder. So, like, um, what do you do in the situations? Obviously, ugly. I'm gonna give you guys some scenarios. Okay. So Hardos will go. If that happened to me, I'd knock that guy out. Somebody better call the law going down to the parking lot. You know? <laughs> you know? Somebody better call the law. <laughs> yeah, the hard o take is, I would have knocked that guy out. I would have punched him down. And then you do that, and the DA is taking some, and ex, you know, the DA is taking an interest in your case mm -hmm. because you're a, it's a Soros DA probably in Chicago, and you're a white guy who punched a black guy, and you know you're, you don't get out on bail. You, 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 there's no bail for you. You, you have to stay in, and you're actually going to get like Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, you're going to be dragged through the mud. Uh, you're not getting to work on Monday. Yeah, and now your wife needs to ride the subway by herself now because you just got arrested probably. because you punched a guy for saying stuff. Um, obviously the ideal would be like, you don't live in a city and you don't take public transport in a city with your baby, but we're past that. These people are already in the situation, the ideal situation. And this is what I think Fleckus talks, the podcast listeners would do. If you're a man on that subway, who isn't the guy, his wife or the baby, if you're another man on that subway and you see this happening, I think you step in between and you let him just talk to you and you step in between and you do secret service hands on your jacket. And you just stand there like this, let him call you monkey, let him call you fat, let him say you're so fat, look how fat you are, fat boy, hey fat monkey, <laughs> and let him call you monkey, and you just stand there like this, 6'2", 300 pounds, 300 XX pounds, <laughs> and you just wait for it to escalate, and as soon as it physically escalates, you finish it, you don't throw a punch, you don't hit anybody for saying anything, and you just stand in between the family, you give that guy a break because he needs to do something and he can't because he's with his kids. Yeah. He can protect his family. They get off of the next stop. You're a hero. Nothing happened. That guy's mentally deranged. It's over. Yeah. But everyone else is just standing around and filming or like sleeping or wearing their headphones mm -hmm. so no one can step up. And all the men probably lost all their virility from watching pornography mm -hmm. and they can't like think of like what I need to do in a situation because they're detached and they're just like in this zone where they float. Yeah. Uh, we always preach on this podcast. Words don't equal swinging. You can never, even if it's the N word, mm -hmm. you can't swing. Uh, and that would be, you know, if you're black, but, <laughs> um, cause I, well, actually I have seen a white guy 
say someone said the N word and then just go like this. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no words do not equal punches, but it is a positioning game. It is a body positioning game. Secret service dance guys is extremely underrated in a street rat scenario. Yeah. And obviously these guys are getting off at the next stop. You can't, it's like, I'll wait for the next train. Don't worry. But it's body positioning. Look at the ready hands on the secret service. Boom. That all was right. fast. Um, so yeah, it's all a body positioning game. Uh, you wait for him to escalate it. Um, and that's it. And, do you say some stuff to him or do you just eat it and kind of just stay quiet? If I was there, I would, knowing that I'm on this podcast and it would be content for later, I would be like, you spice seasoning, you probably over season, use garlic. Like I'd say, <laughs> you're industrious, you ain't industrious, you can't do this. I'd match his uh, tone, you know, I'd what match his built? energy. What have you built? You can't build nothing, you get. You ain't built nothing, your homeland is in Africa, blah, blah, blah. Start doing yeah, like yeah. some real schizo shit back. Took um, you how long to get the wheel? <laughs> Yeah, um, I would just stand like this and be quiet, and I would kind of smile and laugh. Yeah, and then if he got close, I'd like you know. Yeah, it's maybe, a body positioning game, and bit. it's a uh, it's a like stand your ground type thing. Yeah, um, do just we want, in do, between the two? Do we want to read this or no? Uh, no, kind of we already covered on that. It. Yeah, we yeah. did, but um, and also the situation too. It's interesting because everyone talks about white privilege. White people have all this privilege. Look in that situation. Who's got the power? <laughs> who has the people backing him? Who has the media and the law enforcement and the and the establishment on their side? And who's just like a victim who doesn't really have like a, a fair shot at it? It's like white you be privilege. the judge, yeah. White privilege is white. Pri- imagine if it was flipped and there was a black family, a black husband and wife with a black baby, and a white person is coming. Hey, monkey! Hey, monkey! Do you know what would happen? Hate crime of the year. They, the whole family, including the baby, would go to jail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> baby. They'd lock up the baby. Little handcuffs. Yeah. Like, it, do you know what would happen if it was the other way around? Yeah. But it's like, oh, white privilege. It's like the black guy's got the privilege here. And yeah. It's, uh, it's done on purpose. And the white people now are just completely, like, disenfranchised, can't do anything, can't stand up for yourself, can't say anything. And it's just like you have to take it. And they're completely demoralized. And that's why the system is the way it is. It's meant to do exactly this. Yeah. And that's like a living example of what they're trying to do. Exactly. And mom has to distract the kid with some sort of conversation while it's happening. You know, it's tough. It's tough. Hey, another guy in the subway, you step in between, you let him just say whatever he's saying to you. You got your hands on your jacket and you're ready and you're a capable male. Also, uh, yeah, walking around like in cities, urban settings or whatever, uh, we're done with like the, ooh, don't look. Like, mm. ooh, don't look. It's like my eyes are on this guy like I'm the secret service. You know, it's watching every move. Is he reaching in his pockets? Is he doing this? Like, what kind of weapons could he have? It's like threat level midnight and uh, you need to be aware and don't yeah. worry about being impolite and staring because yeah. the impoliteness already is out the door. Exactly, exactly. We need people to help each other out. The good guys versus the bad guys. Yep. You know, there was a... Japanese baseball game against America the other day, mm-hmm. and there was another round before that where someone in the uh, someone hit a home run on Sh- Japan, uh, Japan. Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani hit a home run, and then the Japanese people, one of the Japanese people, caught the ball mm-hmm. and they took a picture with the ball. And then they passed the ball around the stadium. It's happening here in the background. You can see they passed the ball around the stadium for everyone to take a picture with it, and then the ball got returned to the person who caught it. Isn't that nice? It gave everybody a chance to get a picture of the Otani home run ball, and then the ball just got passed back to the rightful owner. Isn't that a nice, high-trust society? <sighs> that's a society I certainly would like to live in, Whereas, and I think I could. I think that's attainable yeah. in certain settings, right? And I think we kind of almost had it mm. ourselves in America. Yep. But nice, high-trust society. See the difference? Yeah. Not everyone's a street rat trying to take from you. Yep. Um, all right, let's play that Sav Hernandez clip. She did that white privilege question with this guy, and the guy got completely smoked. This is like a 10 out of 10. I, I grew up as a white man, and you, you're the exact opposite, you know? And so it's like my experiences are going to be different from yours. How come? I think, uh, you know, there is a thing of, like, white privilege. Uh, what privileges do you have that I don't have? Oh, see, that's the question I keep asking myself because, like, in this day and age, like, all the laws, I say all the laws, you know, I'm... It's hard to speak on something I'm not fully knowledgeable of. So, like, I'm sorry if I, like, make a mistake uh, in saying answer. this. But it's, like, like, uh, hmm. Don't you think it's a problem in society when white people think that they have more privileges than brown or black people? Yeah, and I think that's sort of the agenda that's pushed off. Because, personally, it's, like, 
not that I think I'm more pri privileged than anyone else because I had to work to get where I was and that's like the so why do you have that mentality immediately where you you know kind of apologize to me like let's talk about privilege let's talk about I'm a white man in America so we could have grown up differently I got you. Why, why is that your first initial reaction to me as a brown woman wow you're getting me good see these are the kind of, <laughs> kind of conversations that I love having no you don't should we end it or? yeah he gets smoked and he has no answer and he has no idea and he thinks he's got white privilege because that's what everyone's telling him. That's what the news says. And that's what Stephen Colbert says. And that's what Jon Stewart says. But he didn't really do the reading. He read the cliff notes of woke. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, you know, I got privilege. This guy reminds me of someone who really just wants to get by. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, I'll do kind of the right thing. I'm mostly, I, I'll do my own interests and stuff. The but, right thing in his mind. Yeah. He's, he walks up to the interview just apologizing, ready to, <laughs> just <laughs> bending the knee. It's your time now. Yeah, ride the subway, buddy. See who's got the privilege. Yeah. That's the type of guy you can kind of wake up, though. I agree like, with wake that. Wake up. I agree. Wake up. Snap out of it, buddy. Snap out. It's a bad It's a bad dream. You got to wake up. We need you. Yeah, but so. definitely a Cliff Notes woke guy. Like That's that's kind of basically what an uh, average white guy with two years of college is. Yeah. That's where they're at, right? Yeah. It's been exactly. hammered into them, and they don't know why. Yeah, so he watches too much pornography. Well, and it's funny because it's like, what privilege, you know, this kid never even thought to ask that to a professor, you know? What privilege does a white guy have that I don't? And it's like, he never, nobody ever, they never answer that, right? Like walking alone at night or something, you yeah. know? That's male privilege. That's not white male, you know? And it's like, if you're a big guy. Exactly. Or you have like a weapon and you know how to defend yourself. Yeah, you think the pipsqueak has a uh, nighttime privilege? No, <laughs> he's not. Exactly. Um, but so, yeah, good, good on Sav. Always funny to watch someone kind of with no true belief system get wrecked, get questioned on it. Yeah. Sav's great. She does a great job at that. Another good man on the street person. Yeah. Uh, man on the street. Yeah. What? <laughs> what are you saying about Sav? <laughs> oh, brown woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take my wallet. Yeah. Um, well, Sav's like, got more privilege than me right now. Yeah. I, yeah. I can see that. Brown woman. Nobody questions who, who she's with. If I go to a protest, who's this tall white guy? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. He's friends with Michael Knowles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Sab. We have her linked in the description as well. Make sure you give her a follow. Uh, let's go to the defund the police woman. Oh, yeah. So this is a lady who, um, let's read her tweet before we show her video. This is in 2020 during the George Floyd stuff. This person tweeted what? Yeah, her name is Hillary Ronan, and uh, she works in San Francisco. I don't know if she's like a... I think she works at like a soup kitchen type of thing, okay. or like a mission, yeah. it's called. Okay. So she says, I want to make it clear that I believe strongly in defunding the police and reducing the number of officers on our force. For decades, we've had an imbalance in our city's budget with hundreds of millions of dollars going to SFPD to have them uh, do work they're not qualified to do. And that was in the in the throes of George Floyd mania in yep. August, 2020, when, you know, the social pressure was as high as it gets. Yep. Right. And, uh, here she is now on, in three mid, years later, mid March. For more footbeats and for more officers in the mission district, I've been begging this department to give the mission what it deserves in terms of police presence. All year long. And I have been told time and time and time and time again, there are no officers that we can send to mission. Isn't that embarrassing? A full 180, a true full 180. A true 180, and you don't even realize it. Yeah. It's like a true 180, and you don't even realize what you're saying and then what you said a few years ago. It's like if you're in a position of power and you do a full 180 and you don't even realize you're doing it, you should be fired or resign or step down yeah. because you made the wrong decision the first time when you said, oh, no more cops, less cops, defund the police, less police officers. And now you're saying, where are all the cops? I've been begging. <laughs> I've been begging, I've been begging for, begging for cops. cops. No, you haven't. You're a liar. It's like, oh, you're, you're fired. You're a fart in the wind liar. <laughs> you just go with whatever people are emotionally manipulating you on. You probably, it, it, she probably uh, has a Ukraine flag somewhere. Yeah. And now in two years from now, when that, battle is still raging on and no negotiations have happened and there's been no headway she's going to be like i've been long time critic yeah. of the military industrial complex why are we sending this money to ukraine when in san francisco people are suffering yeah. it's like i've been begging for more cops it's like uh best i can do is three smashed windows a year 
Yeah. And on your car. Less cops. Shut up, white bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> white bitch. Somebody throws shit in her face <laughs> on the liquid That's poop. what she gets. Yeah. And it's like she doesn't even realize that she's going against what she stood for last time because what she stood for last time was just an emotional, you know, what's it called? Uh, a, a tantrum. Yeah. Oh, this is so bad. We need the cops to go away. And it's like you don't even, you're just emotionally, like you're, you're at the whims of your emotion. And it's also like... Um, People have gotten so far away from city government services, right? Like, so what is a city responsible for? It's like police, fire, a couple social service things, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, and then like the water, utilities, and stuff like that. Like, that's pretty much it. And then a place like San Francisco, who has been like, oh, this is under my purview now. The needle exchange, the, the tent situation, the homeless housing. Like, they've gone so far. It's like police is the one thing you need your tax dollars to go to, right? Yeah. Like uh, the one truly essential. And then it's like street lights, street signs, like maintenance. Um, so they've gotten so far away that this woman did a full 180. She's totally disqualified from ever having an opinion again, mm -hmm. you know? And there's different 180s, you know? Someone who changes their mind on abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who goes, oh, you know, I was, I was lost. I was seeing it in a different place. And it's like for this one, it's like, oh, I was really with the moment. Like, they really riled me up. The news, Rachel Maddow really did a number on me. And like you know? the abortion 180, it's like, oh, I was younger. I didn't fully know what an abortion actually is. I, I didn't never, want a kid myself. Want, yeah, exactly. And you grow and you change your view from a 180. Like, I've done that myself. I, when I was younger, like in high school and college, I was pro-choice, but I didn't even know what it meant. I would just be like, oh, yeah, girls, girl's right to choose. Uh, her body, her choice. You'd like say little things like that. This is like so different because she did a 180, but she doesn't even realize that she did it. Yeah. Which is so much worse. Like, oh, I did a 180, but I got new info and now my view is actually correct. And I agree that I used to be wrong. Mm -hmm. This is like, we need police. Where are the police? Then a month later, she'll be like, why are the police beating everybody? We need less police. Like, she doesn't even know what she's fully doing. Yep. Very embarrassing. All right. Uh, let's go to the white guy fight. Yeah. Let's see how a couple white guys fight. Yeah, fuck you. This is pretty old, but it went viral again this yeah. week. So they're fighting. Are you done? Are you done? He says, I'm you done. got me. He said, you're done. You're fighting. You go. They pick up their shit. I got that fucking shuttle. They pick up their shit. They shake hands. He says, good fight. Someone else comes in and goes, God, you guys got that fucking settled. Yeah. That's proper country shit. That's that's a that's a high trust society. Those guys would pass around the baseball. Yeah. They're not going to beat each other. You know, there's not someone who's like lifeless getting his head kicked in. No one's going to shoot someone on Facebook live after this. Yeah. And there's no head stomping. There's no kicking someone while they're down. I love the guy who comes in. Glad you guys got that fucking settled. <laughs> Just like <laughs> he wanted to be involved a little bit. Oh, man. So funny. All right. Let's move on. We have a couple clips of... Urban Decay left. Uh, let's go to the man beat with the bat with his girlfriend. So this is over a parking dispute. That lady hit that guy with the bat. Baseball bat to the head. This guy's been stabbed multiple times by the man. Blood everywhere. And here he comes. The knife guy comes up and he slices his face. He slices the guy's face over a parking dispute. That guy and his queen, probably. Him and his queen. Yeah, that's my queen. She's my ride or die. It's like, you need to be talking to her on a phone through glass, buddy. You guys yeah. are criminals. <laughs> we need less cops. Yeah, we need way less. <laughs> yeah. um, and dude, the funny thing about that, it's like America is not what it used to be, guys. There are people out there on the street who are just ready to stab someone multiple times over a parking dispute, you know? So get the hell out of cities, flee. Um, and, you know, anybody can be a psychopath now. Anybody can be someone who doesn't value life and who uh, would slit your face open, give you a permanent scar over a parking spot. Yeah. Any, there's seriously like this X factor now that wasn't around as much years ago where anyone can be the worst psychopath ever. And you don't know who these people came from. What, did they pay some? You know, they're Hispanic. I don't know. They're probably Brooklyn type people. But like, you never know where someone came from. Some guy with a face tattoo could have crossed the border and just like doesn't know it, how things are over it, here. And his paperwork didn't, you know, it slipped through the cracks, you know. So anybody can be anyone. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't test anybody. Get out of the know? cities is the 
key takeaway there. Yeah. Get out of the urban centers where these types are. Let's go to this one next. Okay. This guy gets robbed outside of a store. A disturbing attack caught on camera in San Fernando. Another a man psycho. was robbed who knows who and that beaten guy is. just outside a grocery store. Police say 31-year-old Edgar Flores this tried guy's to 69 take a bag years old. the 69-year-old victim last Edgar week. Flores. When that man resisted, Edgar Flores, Flores is kicking him in the face while he's down. And this worker does Ziggy's nothing. And then here comes the guy Flores, from the back who, got away, who actually but does something. It didn't take long for listener. police to track him down. Mr. Flores is somebody who the San Fernando Police Department has had numerous contacts with in the past. So upon seeing the video footage, uh, officers immediately recognized him. Yeah. The victim if is the officers recognize you off a blurry camera, you should probably However, be in jail. Like, yeah. just period. Keep him. Right? Keep him. Need it or keep it? <laughs> keep him locked up. <laughs> keep him. Um, all right, last clip. Let's go to the girl who was on spring break. Let's show the macro picture first very briefly, yeah. right? So Spring break, Miami. Here's what the food seasoners are up to. Just destroying someone's car because they can and because there aren't police. Uh, all minorities. Everyone is black, I guess. I don't know. Or Hispanic. There are people in this car, you know. And then let's zoom in on who's in the crowd. Like, who's... Yeah, who's what, well, yeah and what do they have going on? What's happening to them? If y'all come to Miami, do not give no guy, since y'all want to remove my sound, don't give no guy y'all phone to put their number in because... This guy just cashed up his stuff a thousand dollars with my sister money and took went on my sister's phone, act like he was putting his number in and sends up a whole thousand dollars. So y'all blow his stuff up and tell him to send my sister her money back. I don't think he has to send it back. Yeah, that's a good heist. Fair and square. A thousand dollars is not a lot of money for like a police report. You know, it's a lot of money to a person for sure. Yeah. But like for a cop, like, oh, if someone stole a thousand dollars, they're gonna be like, eh. We got worse stuff. And then you do 10 of those a night, you get 10 grand. That's a good day. I like doing those little crimes like that. And it's like, you know, you just committed wire fraud. <laughs> you know, it's like an actual serious charge. But, you know, that's the type of people in Miami. What are your thoughts on this girl and the way she speaks and the way she looks? Um, she puts a lot of effort into the way she looks, mm -hmm. into her makeup and her lashes and her hair and her lips. Yep. And I'm sure her fake butt mm -hmm. and her stupid outfit with the holes in it. A lot of people wear the outfits with the holes in it, and they got holes like so you can see all their skin. Yeah. That's what's going on in Miami. That's why yeah. you don't go to Miami. Spring break in Miami, nightmare, amateur hour. That's one of my least favorite types of people. Yeah. A girl who talks like that and does social media. Let me tell you I, what's going on in Miami yeah. spring break. Let me let me let you in on the hustle. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Miami is done. We gave it up to idiot spring breakers. Um, you know. There are new places for spring break, and we're not going to air them out on the show because we don't want these types to uh, go find it, yeah, right? because they watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they watch. <laughs> they watch, and they go, ooh, St. Augustine, Florida, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but all the chicken has a lot of garlic salt on it. Yeah. All right, let's move on out of Urban Decay into Uplifting Gold. Don't get too down. We have some uplifting clips and things to show you that will make you less depressed. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the first one, the Nike update. Yeah, this isn't a video, but it says Nike announces it'll stop using kangaroo leather for its soccer cleats. Oh. Didn't uh, know that was happening. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know. Okay. Okay. Any comments on that? No, I just wanted to go, oh. Okay, kangaroos are like basically deer. It's yeah. it's basically deer in a weird different form. Um, you can use that leather. Yeah. That's... You eat kangaroos? Yeah. Huh. I've been to Australia. You ever eat an, uh, a kangaroo there? Uh, I don't even think so. I don't. Think I never so. even thought I saw it on the menu either. We went to Australia when we yeah. were younger. Yeah. Um, but hey, good for the kangaroos, I guess. Less demand. All right. Uh, next, Mike Tyson met Hezbollah and thought it was a baby. He's actually punching him. <laughs> And these aren't like kissing him and pretending to bite his ear. But Hezbollah is like 18, right? Yeah, he's like 20 or something. Yeah. So Mike Tyson thought that was a baby, <laughs> I guess is the gist of that. And Hezbollah so. probably didn't like getting like picked up and like kissed like that. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Next, the funny fat person stores in China. So what do they say? That one is what? BB fat. BB fat. Fat girls. Fat girls. These are all Chinese 
over fatty seven. fat girl. <laughs> Love calories. Moo moo. Thai fat. Beauty isn't a size. And fat cat, of course. So those are all the stores in China for fat people. That's what they do. Yep. That's pretty good. That's yeah. uplifting. Uh, they're honest in Asia. If one thing they are, it's straightforward and honest. Because, yeah. uh, you know, us, it's like Lane Bryant or like plussy plussy size. Yeah, yeah. They call them, they got, <laughs> you, get a, you go to a fat store in America, you get a modeling contract. Big and they tall. They go, ooh, you look sloppy, but with a skinny face. You're perfect yeah. for making girls who are fat feel good. Big and tall for us. Yeah. You've been there. You go in the big and tall section. I used to. Mm. I had to buy a belt once, and I had to get it from the big and tall size. And now that belt is like way tighter and like easier to get on. I could go to a normal size belt place now. <laughs> good. So I'm a good be- progress, buddy. Yeah, good progress. All right. Next, we have some good baby stuff. A guy, a dad teaches his son how to ride a bike at the beach. That's uplifting. Isn't that nice? Yep. He's so happy. That's a foundational moment. Yep. Core memories at the beach with your family. Kids riding a bike. Next generation. That's oh, good stuff. Oh, he pedaling. Boom. Nice job, buddy. That's Dad good to see. It's all, not all depressing stuff. It's not all transgenders and radical racists. There's still some good... <laughs> and still, spice supremacists. Yeah. There's still some good... Uh, there's still some good family values out there in America. You can't get too depressed. And then the baby in the stroller who wants Cheetos. Here's the wrapper. <laughs> the baby <laughs> goes like that. That's pretty good. Rap Boy does that too. Whenever I open a bag of chips or anything with a crunchy wrapper, he looks over. Yeah, and he goes, that's me who does it, not you. <laughs> that's definitely me. Sometimes I'll just ruffle something like a fortune cookie or something just to see him look. <laughs> and I go, what? what was that? That's what Jerry does too. Yep. Um, all right, now we got some men stuff. Okay. You know, there's like good men and there's bad men. We're showing some of the good men now. Um, look at this first one. This is a pilot landing in how much? 32 knot wind? 31 knot crosswind landing of an Embraer uh, 195. So a regional aircraft that's more susceptible to wind, right? Yeah. Look at this. One hand on it. You're going like 300 miles an hour and you got one hand on it and you're coming towards the ground. That's what's going on in there. Smooth touchdown. That's what's going on, though? Yeah, that yoke, I think it's called the yoke, is moving yeah. a lot. You're going like this, trying to land the plane. Is it like every time? Is it just like hoping for the best? Well, that's a tough cross crosswind landing or whatever is what they call it. So Yeah, uh, that's how it goes down, though. The one hand jerking on it, uh, and then you land. Well, let's let's fill the pilot. Let's fill the cockpit with people for diversity reasons. It's funny. There's <laughs> yeah. There's actually uh, like a huge. I'm always noticing landings uh, on the plane because it's like pilots pride themselves on uh, uh, the ability to have a clean landing, especially in harsh conditions like that. And like and sometimes I'm like, you do like a bounce touchdown almost. Mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, ugh, I don't know if I trust that captain anymore. Like he yeah. kind of lost. And then the captain faces the passengers as they're deboarding. And it's like, if you had a bumpy landing, you don't want to face the passengers. Yeah. You know, that's scary. You yeah. think there'd be more problems on landings, but like every plane just takes off and lands pretty much fine. For now. For now. I don't get it. Wait until the... Look at this next one, more man stuff. This is from like the 1900s. Uh, what's this from like the 60s or something. It mm, counts, 1900s. Look at this. 1990 uh, construction for Olympic Games. And we're not going to play the music because it's copyright. So imagine there's some nice music behind it. But look at this. Look at that. Climbing around, building stuff. Zero fall protection. OSHA doesn't even exist yet. No, I think it does. But this is just, there's certain ironwork that it's just like, you have to do it. You have to go and crazy. And you climb around a building 50 stories up. Yep. And this is this was work today. And you come home and your kid's got purple hair and wants to be a transgender DJ or whatever. Yep. And this is what you're doing at your job. You're climbing a building with no ropes, trying to make what, 60K a year? I think they do a little better than that, but this guy um, should make two three hundred thousand. I know. I, I think they do. They they do make a lot. Um, and look at him go up. They go. They climb it like it, they go up. 
there's got to be a better way. Um, and then I was actually watching a, a brief documentary on this, and it's called, I think they were, the group that was featured in the documentary was called the Mohawk Skywalkers. Oh, the Native Americans. And yeah. so the, a lot of these guys are Native Americans who do it multi-generationally. So it's like the grandpa does it, the dad does it, the kid does it. And then like it's kind of a passing of uh, a coming of age thing to like get over your fear of heights and start doing it. That. So. And these guys built like the Chrysler building, the Empire State Building. Like they did work on a lot of them. So that's cool. Uh, shout out to that. That's a dope cultural thing that they have. Yeah, that's good men stuff. Mm -hmm. um, all right, next, let's go to the guy who stops the mass shooting. This is great. This happened a week ago in Tampa. Yeah. In Tampa. Yeah. So this guy's walking in with a gun out and a mask on. And this other guy just kind of grabs the gun. And he's like, nah, you're not going in there, buddy. Yeah. I don't. And he gets the gun the out. gun falls. This guy's mask. He's fat. You this I, this should be the in the doppelganger almost. And then the guy gets the gun. He points it back, like, back off. And then the guy doesn't. He lunges for it again. Yeah. And there's and a they fight. they stomp him out. And yeah. they stomp him out. That's good men stuff. That's good podcast. That's average podcast listener. Yep. Absolutely. That's what we do. All right. Last clip. Shout out to that guy. It's amazing. You, put, you, you saved lives. Like, that's, that's the guy who stands up in the Secret Service stance on the subway. Yeah, and defends that family. All right, last clip. Um, the old woman who likes physical touch. This stuff makes me mad. That's so nice. She's an old lady. She... That's nice. It's not a bit. You're just happy to be with the old woman. It's not a bit. It's not a bit. <laughs> The guy's even laughing. <laughs> uh, stuff like that makes me uncomfortable. Well. No further. Uh, it's not a bit. That was yeah. just nice. Old people are nice. Spend time with them. All right. Well, that's the end of the episode. Another Focus Talks in the Books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe. All the good stuff. Support our sponsors, Public Square. Support our sponsors, Bonus Land. Join. Links in the description for that. If you're watching at this point and you're not a member of Bonus Land, doesn't really add up. Doesn't make sense to me that you watch the show all the way through to the last second, but you wouldn't take the extra 30 minute episode that comes out on Mondays. And then last but not least, Fleckus Merch. FleckusMerch.com is the website. We have the Clinton shirt. We have a bunch of cool stuff. Get it while you still can. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.